I was walking through Kmart the other day and bang, a keyboard, full mechanical gaming keyboard came out to me with a price tag of $25 Aussie dollars. And when I went to the register, they said, this is actually 39 Aussie dollars. And then I said, no, you guys had this advertised with a price tag of 25. So they actually misplaced it on the shelves and I ended up getting this keyboard for 25 bucks. So I got three of them and then I used my mates staff discount and we got it for 71 Aussie dollars. But apparently this keyboard usually costs $39, which is about 28 USD. And upon clicking the buttons, they do indeed have a mechanical style switch and it's known as a mechanical blue with tactile feedback in that you'll actually feel the feedback and you will hear it upon clicking the keys. And this is a box style switch with LED lighting that's set to one color, but since they've changed the colors along the rows, it does give off that RGB effect. However, in today's video, we're gonna be testing this budget mechanical keyboard and comparing it against a Corsair gaming keyboard with silver switches and a thousand hertz polling to see not only the input latency that could be incurred from the actuation distance on the keys, but also the differences between the keyboard and the hardware that they use and see if that introduces input lag too, especially the polling rates. Because I do suspect this keyboard right here is going to carry the default 125 hertz. And of course, we'll be checking out the build quality on this keyboard and seeing if it holds up just with standard typing tests and what the consistencies of the keys are like. Let's roll that intro and get it on. Have you built a PC recently only to be met with a Windows needs activation message in the bottom right hand corner even whilst you're playing games? Well, if you want to get rid of this message and you don't want to spend $200 plus on a key, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 bucks after using the coupon code TYC, you can get yourself a single end user license quickly and easily. Then you get the key, paste that key in there, click next, and you're good to go. Links in description below to get your key today. So quickly analyzing the input latency for you guys, we can see here that the keyboard, the Anko Mechanical Budget Banger from Kmart does have a little bit of input delay, but I feel like most of this is due to the actual switch and the height that it actuates at, as well as the cheaper hardware inside the keyboard itself. So this keyboard's naturally going to poll at 125 hertz. Uh, if we've got the K70 to compare it to here, this polls at uh, different ratios. You can set it on the back of the keyboard from 1000 hertz to 125. But basically the difference between 125 hertz and 1000 hertz was that they can be similar or there's a little bit more variance on 125 hertz especially comparing this to the Logitech G102, which I know has virtually zero input delay, we can see that at 125 Hertz, we were getting slightly higher times on some of the numbers, but then coming really close a lot of the other times. And this is because when you're within that realm of 125 Hertz, you're basically polling 125 times a second. So that does leave you to the worst time that you can poll at, at eight milliseconds versus a thousand times which is the worst time you can pull it at one millisecond. So it is gonna be beneficial for you to have your keyboard at a higher refresh rate or a higher polling rate, at least from the testing I've done here today. Anyway, I'll throw up some quick input latency figures for you on this cheap budget banger. Let's get now onto a typing test and we'll talk about whether you should think about buying this keyboard or not. When you get a keyboard like this, you are going right into the deep end. Like that is where you're going with this thing, all right? So let's go typing tests. That's right. Boom. Yeah. 132, baby. That's right, smoked the competition, smoked them. First place. All right, so six keys will make this keyboard spasm out. So there's five key rollover, really. That is actually the worst I've seen <laughs> on a keyboard to date. <laughs> So with those tests out of the way, I'm gonna look at the build quality now and then give you guys a recommendation on this keyboard. And so with the build quality, you've got an all plastic construction on this keyboard. It does feel a little bit cheap, but it is far from the 
cheapest feeling keyboard I've tried. And trust me, I've tried some real bangers that I would recommend staying far away from. This build quality for me personally, it, it does just cut it. Like I'm gonna say it cuts it, it does make the cut. But I would recommend getting your own wrist rest and even on high-end keyboards, I'd recommend going out and buying your own wrist rest because a latex wrist rest, it does make a big world of a difference in my opinion. However, one thing I found with the typing test was this thing was pretty good. The keys were consistent and the mechanical blues had good feedback. So whatever switches they've used, uh, the unknown brands, they did do a fairly good job and the keycaps themselves are double shot plastic and they actually feel quite decent. So the area where they really needed to get it right on a keyboard, they actually did get it right and that's the switches and the keycaps. However, there are some things that they have missed and that of course is that five key rollover where on the box, I'm pretty sure it said something about like 26 key, which is like completely false as we saw in those tests. Another thing as well is the RGB is really like basic. It's extremely basic to the point where you just press this one key and you've just got these different effects that cycle through. And I will say that the lights are actually extremely weak. It's some of the weakest lighting or backlighting I've seen on a keyboard yet. So I wouldn't be buying this for the RGB effect. I'd be simply, if I wanted to buy it, I'd be buying it for the mechanical blues and also the decent typing experience you can get on it. So for a quick recommendation with this keyboard, I'm not blown away by it, but at the same time, I'm not gonna bash it, especially at its price point, it did the job. I think it'd be great for someone who say, wants to get someone a present for their birthday and maybe they forgot until the last minute and they just need to pop down a Kmart. It'd be a good little starter keyboard in the world of mechanical keyboards. And then if they really like the blue switch, they can maybe get something with better polling rates and higher actuation points. But that being said, it doesn't take away from the fact that this little keyboard does the job. However, one thing I will critique about the Unco brand in uh, Kmart is that its packaging is really bad. I'd like to see them at least put some foam around the keyboard so it doesn't get damaged. I mean, if you get one of these keyboards and it's not working out of the box or one of the keys stuffed, it's probably because the packaging was packed so poorly and that it's just got a piece of cardboard covering the outside world and the keyboard. I mean, they're really placing a lot of faith in the plastic. Though lastly, there is no included software. The cable is quite sturdy and decent and the bottom of the keyboard has one level of adjustment for height. And then at the front, it has two little sticky feet to make it stick to the desk, which does stick quite well. It's not gonna stick the best I've seen of keyboards, but it will hold its position if you're just typing and using it like a normal keyboard. And with all that aside, if you guys enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also let us know in the comments section below, what is your favorite budget mechanical keyboard or in general, just your favorite mechanical keyboard. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Linolus Lowry. And they ask, how long until Zen 3? Should I buy a 3600 now while I wait? And... What I've heard is, is that Zen uh, 3 is coming out at the end of this year, though I haven't heard anything concrete at this point in time. So, I mean, honestly, it could be two months, it could be three months, it could even be longer if they don't release it at the end of this year. So, I mean, a 3600 is a good buy, man. You might not even need to upgrade to Zen 3 if all you're doing is gaming on a mid-range GPU. So, I'd say getting a 3600 now, you're not going to be disappointed. Hope that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content and you want to see it the moment it drops, then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Oh.